Hey there, my name is Portia Laurie. Welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. And I am sitting down today because I am doing another ranking video. So today's tier list is actually going to be all Degrassi couples. So I loved filming my video last year where I talked about Degrassi and all the times that it went there. And so I've been trying to kind of racking my brain about like how do I make another Degrassi video without it being too similar to my last one and also so it's not the exact same as like my whole Boy Meets World series that I have going on. So I thought I'd make a tier list. It took far longer than I thought it would but if you enjoy this list the link for this tier list in the description box below if you would like to do this on your own. But if you like my opinion on all things pop culture, TV shows, movies, music, whatever, do me a solid and drop a like on this video then run over to that subscribe button, hit the bell next to it, and be notified every time I upload. If I look similar to a previous video, because I this is the second vi video I'm filming today, I apologize that you have to deal with the same makeup and also this planet that is actually growing out of my face. I tried to fix it. I don't know how people cover up pimples with makeup. I put in like a shit ton, just like slathered this with concealer and like it only is further highlighting it. But let's get started. Okay, so I made a, my own tier list. So that means I came up with the categories as well. So the categories are as follows. We have our top tier, S tier that most people consider it as, but I've uh, titled it Endgame. We want to see them together as an audience and we can't picture them not being together. The next category will be classic high school love stories. So this might not be quite end game material. Maybe the two don't quite belong together and you know that as an audience member. However, their love story is just beautiful or classic to high school experiences. The next level is Cupatoxic, which I think is where a majority of our couples will actually end up, where they look cute together and they have cute moments or there's cute memories or cute episodes with them but in the long run, these two are not meant to be. The next, who asked for this? Which are couples that just don't make sense to me that for some reason either dated for a long period of time or a short period of time, but for whatever reason we were like, but why did you put them together? And the last one, which will be dumpster fire, which I think goes without saying, these are couples that should have never happened but unfortunately they did, so we have to rank them too. Now, as far as the options at the bottom, there are a lot of Degrassi couples, okay? If you spent any amount of time watching this show, then you would know that majority of cast members end up with other cast members, okay? So I picked my favorite couples and couples that I think were very prominent during seasons one through seven. Again, I'm a big Degrassi fan, but I only really like The Next Generation. Everything after season seven is kind of, it's just not my cup of tea. But anyway, today's list is Degrassi seasons one through seven couples. Oh, and lastly, so all the couples I've picked out have dated. There are a couple couples that are not real. They are definitely couples that the audience really wanted to see to get together or it was hinted at in the show, but they never actually really dated. So I've included just a few of those because I thought that they were really important. So if your favorite couple is missing from this list, I apologize in advance, make your own list and I'll do it. So I feel like if we're gonna talk about Degrassi, we gotta talk about you know, D.O.G. Degrassi. If you didn't know, Degrassi was, I guess you could say a reboot or a continuation of Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi High, which aired in the 80s. So it's only fitting that we start out with our first couple who is from the original show, Snake and Spike. So Snake is a teacher at Degrassi. He was also an alumni of Degrassi. And Spike is an alumni of Degrassi and that's how they met back in high school. Now I'm not familiar with the 80s show whatsoever. I've literally never watched a single episode. So all of my knowledge of the original show is from whatever they tell you in Degrassi The Next Generation. So my understanding is that Archie's always had a crush on Christine. Emma's mom, but it never really worked out for them. I think they like maybe kissed or dated briefly in high school, but that was pretty much all that they got. It wasn't until Emma entered Degrassi, we really saw their relationship be rekindled. Now they have gone through ups and downs. She was pregnant and almost didn't tell Archie she was pregnant, but then that all got resolved. They ended up having their first and only child together, Jack. Later on, we see that Snake actually battles cancer. And so she's, um, a very supportive 
through that entire endeavor with him. And then later, later on, we see that he actually cheats on Spike with another teacher at Degrassi. I wouldn't consider them end game per se. Like I don't look at their love story and feel like inspired to fall in love. So for that reason, I'm gonna go with classic love story. And I think that actually kind of works because they did, he was in love with her for all of high school and it wasn't until after the fact that they got together, which I think is actually kind of classic. So I think that works. But our next couple is going to be none other than Craig and Ashley. What a love story that they have. It's very convoluted. It's very toxic. It's very fun to watch. For me, these two might be considered like a classic love story, but I just find them to be really toxic together. Like they look cute on camera, but their personalities just clash way too much. And I just don't think that like they were ever really on the same page. I, I didn't really know how Craig and Ashley's relationship ultimately ended up. I know she went on tour with him, right? I don't know. I just think that their relationship is not... It just wasn't that great to me. It just was very entertaining to watch. So I'm gonna throw them into cute, but toxic. Next couple is gonna be Paige and Spinner. I love their relationship. I just felt like they were supposed to be together. It wasn't actually until I was like kind of rewatching the show along with DC Grapevine that I realized that Spinner and Paige aren't together the entire show, which is always kind of how I looked at them. Like they were just, a constant couple but actually they don't get together until I think it's like season two-ish that they really really start like actively dating. I guess the one downside I would put to them is that Spinner's growth of as like a human as like a personality um I don't think he really experiences much growth with Paige I think he experiences more once he stops dating Paige and he he dates around. But I love their love story, so I'm going to put them into classic high school love story. Would have liked if they could have ended up together, understand why they didn't, but still, I very much enjoyed their time as a couple. Speaking of classic couples, Sean and Emma. Now they, I think they embody every single category on my list, to be totally honest. Are they end game? I mean, by Degrassi standards, clearly not, because they, they don't end up together. In fact, I'm pretty sure Sean goes off to war and we never hear from him again. So like for all we know, he died. And also like he wasn't even invited to that Drake re mini reunion music video. Sean and Emma, I feel like this is gonna be unpopular, but they are my favorite Degrassi couple of all time. And I don't care, fight me about it in the comments, but I genuinely, absolutely adore Sean and Emma. So they are going into Endgame because they are my Endgame. I figured, you know, this is the only picture that's really worth putting up there. Speaking of dysfunctional relationships, this is high key the most dysfunctional relationship that takes place on Degrassi. And that would be the one between Manny and Craig. Now this is one of my favorite love stories as well, but their relationship goes through so many ebbs and flows. Like shortly after his breakup with Ashley, you know, Manny finds out that she's pregnant. And so there's a whole episode or two episodes dedicated to the outcome of that. After the, uh, the flashing incident with Peter and that whole video of her flashing the camera goes around, he, you know, is the first person to like defend her. That was the kind of the beginning of when people's computers were getting hacked, like celebrities and and real kids too. I fell for her in that episode and it was nice to see a guy actually come to her defense about it, which we don't get to see a lot, especially in the other reactions from like Spinner or Jimmy, who are definitely more gross about it. He, he makes it big, he gets signed by a record company and they ultimately end up breaking up because he, develops a drug problem. So for Craig and Manny, I would personally put them in Endgame because even though they're toxic and they've got a lot of problems, I really like them together. I just think that they're very sweet together. But I think realistically, they've got to go in cute and toxic. That's, I think that's where they actually belong. I really enjoy them, but I don't think they're really, really Endgame. They're pretty, 
They're pretty terrible to each other. Well, actually, Craig's pretty terrible to Manny, but that's like a whole other topic. Why don't we talk about Jimmy and Hazel? So Jimmy and Hazel get together in the uh, breakfast, <laughs> the breakfast club style episode where they all have Saturday detention and they all end up creating a bond with each other that only really lasts throughout the end of that episode. But one of the most important things that comes out of that episode, how many times am I going to say episode, is Jimmy and Hazel's relationship, which goes on for a considerable amount of time in high school, to the point where I kind of forgot that they were together by the time that Jimmy paints that mural in the last, in, uh, not the last season, but I believe that's season seven. What I'm trying to say by that is that they basically like put them together and then never gave them any real storylines. Yes, Jimmy gets shot, and obviously Hazel is the dude, dutiful girlfriend next to him. But even then, we barely see Hazel while Jimmy's going through all of his rehabilitation and stuff. We more so see Jimmy hanging out with Craig and Marco. It's understandable why they dated, but then it was just pointless to have them keep dating just to like not even utilize their storyline for something. Uh, who asked for this? I'm throwing it into that category. I think Jimmy's relationship with Ashley is far more interesting than his relationship with Hazel, and they don't even date for as long, and they date when they're even younger. Yeah, I'm upset. Okay, so earlier I mentioned I put a few couples on here that are not real couples. The top couple I shipped but did not get together were, would be Craig and Ellie. And I know what you're thinking, they did get together. Yes, they made out, I think a couple times, like sporadically, but they were never an official couple. They never went on dates. We never got to see their relationship develop past in innocent flirtation. Those are two personality types I think would have gone so well together. I don't think Ellie and Craig in high school could, but I think college Ellie and out on his own Craig could make it work. It's kind of disappointing and Degrassi goes to Hollywood. <laughs> because I know that they have this flirtation and it's kind of happening, but it doesn't, it still doesn't come to fruition. I think in that movie, Craig is dating someone else. And so Ellie's still just kind of pining away for him, but it just never ever happens, which is kind of frustrating because she's actually one of the characters on the show that's not fucking terrible. You know what I mean? Like, not that everyone on Degrassi is terrible, but like, as far as like mean bones in their body, I think Ellie has the least, but I'm gonna put Craig and Ellie in Endgame. And I know that makes no sense since they were not a real Degrassi couple. They are going behind Sean and Emma. Okay, I'm not putting them up in the front, but I do think that they could have been Endgame worthy. Sean also dates Ellie on the show. And I actually really enjoyed their little time as a couple. I think that they balanced each other out. He was so, he lacked so much motivation and she kind of helped him to stay on track. And when she would get overwhelmed with stuff, he was there to like help her relax. And it's kind of crazy because they both came from such dysfunctional families. So I think given their backgrounds, it makes sense that they would get in a relationship with each other because they have all of this trauma bonding, but also that's really not good for you. I also think that leads to a recipe of recreating the same trauma that you were traumatized with as a child. So I'm gonna throw them into the classic high school love story. They weren't end game, but they definitely were great for the time that they were together. I definitely feel like they, the writers made that storyline so seamless. It made sense why they were the, together and then it made sense for them to also break up. Let's talk about more dysfunctional couples. One of my favorite dysfunctional couples is Spinner and Darcy. Mostly because it was one of those couples that I was like, what in the actual fuck is this? Why did they end up dating? I'm really trying to rack my brain of like, what exactly led them to be like, we should be a couple? I just assume because Spinner does sports and she's a cheerleader, they met in that kind of capacity. I can barely remember their relationship. So obviously I don't think of it very fondly. I don't really care that much about Darcy. I think it's because her personality was super polarizing. She was the biggest mean girl. Like I could not stand the way that she spoke and 
talk to Mia, that character, when she came around. So I think that is also creating quite a bias when I'm looking at this specific couple. So I'm going to throw Spinner and Darcy into dumpster fire because I legit don't, I barely remember their relationship. The only things I remember about it are bad. And I was very happy when they broke up. So I'm going to throw them in dumpster fire. Speaking of dumpster fire relationships, we're not going to spend too much time on this one, but Terry and Rick most certainly go in dumpster fire. Dylan and Marco, their relationship, while not, not at all perfect, I thought was a really great, I thought it was a great depiction of someone going from being in the closet to being out of the closet and being in their first major relationship. I thought that they were really sweet to each other. I think that the ebbs and flows of their relationship makes sense. Unfortunately, I felt like when we talked about their relationship, it was always like conquering something. Like with the fact that his parents don't know he's out, but like Dylan's out to everyone. So that can get a little frustrating just cause it's like, that's not all a relationship is. Like they have interpersonal problems too. I think Degrassi did the best that they could. I do like Dylan and Marco's relationship. I think it's good for what it was, but it's also very toxic. So I'm gonna put them in keep it toxic. Like they were nice, they weren't end game, but I thought that they were, I like, I enjoyed watching their relationship. But then we have Paige and Alex, which I've read kind of both sides of this online is that a lot of people enjoyed their love story because it was nice to see like this popular girl really, really struggle with her own sexual orientation. And that was really like something that connected to some people. But a lot of people also thought that this was just done for, I wouldn't say ratings purposes, but just to make it more racy. They really sexualized their relationship. At that premiere for the uh, Jay and Silent Bob uh, Go Canadian, the premiere, everyone is watching them at this after party because they're dancing together. Girls dancing together is not like groundbreaking or new. But for whatever reason, they hypersexualized that part. And I felt like their whole relationship was pretty hypersexualized. I also feel like this relationship ends with something super, super petty. Like Alex is in between jobs and in between what she wants to do. And Paige, who just had like this huge mental breakdown, is finally back on the right track. And she just, she just can't with Alex's shenanigans. I don't think they brought out the best in each other's characters. So I'm actually going to put this in the who asked for this category. I feel like I liked I liked their relationship, but I just felt like there was a lack of substance. And now looking back as an adult, I think it was just hypersexualized because girls making out was really cool and edgy at that time. I want to say that that same year of like that relationship playing through Degrassi is like the same time that Gossip Girl was doing those advertisements of them being like the raciest show on television and parents don't want you to watch this. I feel like that was all in the same time frame of like, let's hypersexualize teenagers, which like I guess we're still doing because Riverdale. So we haven't grown that much as a society. All right, I am back. Um, as you can see, it is a different day now. I started this video yesterday and then literally halfway through getting through this tier list, I was like, I'm bored. So <laughs> I was like, I think I need to come back with like a little renewed energy. Let's talk about um, Peter. I think the first relationship that Peter's in on the show is with Emma, actually. So like we meet Peter and he's Ma Mrs. Hasselhoff's or Miss Hatsas's son. Emma's super attracted to him. Like right off the bat, she's like, dibs, this is my man. And then that whole thing happens with Manny at the party and he like films it with her shirt off and then releases it to the entire school. But that's okay because it's still okay for Emma to then date him at a later time. It does cause friction between Manny and Emma, but like not enough to really break up their friendship. Not to mention these two are the most like dysfunctional best friends on the planet. So I feel like with Emma and Peter's relationship, he actually does like seem to be somewhat of a decent human being because she has an ED during their relationship together. And he is one of the people along with Manny that helps her get help for it. So it's like, he's not a complete douchebag, but I still don't like him. I just don't, there's something about Peter that I don't like. I think that they had good chemistry, but the fact that Emma's dad cheated on her mom with Peter's mom, I think really puts a wrench into their relationship. It wasn't realistic that they were gonna like 
the end game or anything. But I'm gonna throw this in the who asked for this category only because I just don't, I don't really care for these two humans. You know, yesterday I put Dylan and Marco into Cupid Toxic and that's just based on the fact that like we don't get to see much of their relationship so we only hear about the re really good parts when it first starts and then later on when Dylan cheats on Marco. But I'm actually gonna move them into classic love story. I think their relationship's pretty cute and we don't get a lot of like long-term gay relationships. Let's give them credit where credit is due. All right, let's talk about a quintessential couple of Degrassi, Jimmy and Ashley. So Jimmy and Ashley date Jimmy and Ashley date twice on the show. Um, when we first meet their characters, they've been in a relationship for who knows how long. We kind of get this understanding that they're like elementary school sweethearts that has carried over into junior high. And I think their relationship is pretty, it's pretty boring at the beginning, I'm not gonna lie. They just ho both happen to be part popular. They roll in the same crew, um, but there's like not much to their relationship. Then they end up breaking up after they do. She does something at a party and it ends up super embarrassing herself in front of all of her friends, as well as completely alienating herself from from her entire friend group. And then by the time her and Jimmy get back together, this is post um, his disability. This is him in a wheelchair now. So their relationship has to be completely different. And I actually like how they got back together and I like the demonstration of that relationship. I feel like them getting back together and ultimately breaking up again is kind of full circle for their relationship. It kind of felt like more closure than the last time they had broken up when, when Ashley was gone. I didn't know until like my adult years that apparently a lot of people don't care for the character of Jimmy. I always liked Jimmy. I mean, not, not before he got shot though, to be fair. Like I definitely think his character got way more interesting, way more layered, way more like good storylines, consistent storylines after the whole incident happens. But I always enjoy Jimmy's character. Don't love Ashley, but I enjoyed watching her character's development. Whether or not I actually like cared about her personality or anything is like different. I like the character art. So I think that their relationship is quite beautiful. I, I would, you know what? No, I wouldn't put them as Endgame because I just never foresaw their personalities clicking again like they used to probably when they were children. But I really enjoy their stories. So I'm throwing them into classic love story. Wow, we don't have much for the end game. I do think that the majority of couples on Degrassi are not good together, but that's kind of the point of dating in high school, isn't it? To figure out what it is that you do want when you're actually ready for, for a full lifetime commitment. So it kind of makes sense that most of these couples are not really the greatest together, but it doesn't make this any less fun. Let's talk about Mia and Lucas. So Mia's story, um, if you're unfamiliar, is actually really interesting. She's a teenage mom, but when she's introduced to the show, it's not like we're gonna follow that whole storyline, which I feel like gets a little repetitive and boring by this point, because they've covered teen pregnancies a lot on Degrassi. Okay, so when Lakehurst and Degrassi ultimately join, she's reunited with her baby's father, enter Lucas. And her, Mia and Lucas decide to kind of rekindle their romance, I think because Mia is lonely. And I think Lucas just really enjoys having Mia around him. I think he's super attracted to Mia, but I think he has absolutely no idea who he is as a human, how to have commitment. He's got daddy issues. He's just full of a lot of problems. So they don't date for very long before Mia realizes like he's not the dude for me and he's definitely doesn't need to be a part of my daughter's life if he doesn't want to show the effort and responsibility to be part of her daughter's life. So I'm going to throw this relationship into dumpster fire. I enjoy watching it because I think it's an important lesson to learn, but I don't enjoy their relationship. Spinner and Manny, um, this is a speed round. I'm just going to throw them into who asked for this. Because literally, who asked for this? Like, why do they... Ooh, speaking of a, another dumpster fire one, I'm throwing Paige and that time she dated a teacher's assistant into dumpster fire. I've already mentioned this in several videos. I don't like this whole idea that we've made it acceptable for teachers to date students in pop culture. I hate, I hate that that was so normalized for so many years. I hate that I shipped some, some of these situations as if they were like not disgusting. Paige and Mr. Oleander, that's his name, Mr. O. Yeah, we don't even need to talk about that pun. And I remember thinking at that time 
that, wow, Paige is so lucky because older guys like her. I'm so gross. I'm so grossed out. So this is why we shouldn't normalize things like that because as a kid, I thought it was cute. And it's only now as an adult that I'm like, yeah, no, that's not cute. It's, it's, it's a crime. Okay, let's go back to Ellie. Remember Ellie? I love Ellie so much. Marco and Ellie. So I threw them on this list just for because they do date on the show. I mean, part of me would have loved if she and Marco ended up together, but that like Abby wasn't gonna happen, seeing as how Marco's gay and not bisexual. Although I feel like they got my hopes up in season seven when they had that mysterious makeout because everyone's moving out. And so they're sad because they're not gonna live together anymore even though they could just get another apartment together. I don't know what the big deal is. But that really can, I remember it just being like, I, I let go of the idea of Marco and Ellie a long time ago. So when they brought that up again, I was like, how dare you? I'm throwing them into Endgame. Uh, you could fight me about it. I think that their friendship is their own version of their love story. And I think sometimes friendships can be just as beautiful and fulfilling as a love interest. So you know what? They're going into Endgame, okay? Their friendship is goals. I ship them as friends forever. Jay and Manny. I kind of don't hate Jay and Manny together. You, you know what? There's something about their two characters that just have care chemistry together because their chemistry on screen did make me kind of come around to Jay for a while. The episode, Manny's trying to audition for Smithsdale acting or whatever, and he like messes up her tape, but then like gets a car and tries to correct it so that she could get into Smithdale acting, whatever, whatever. I actually really enjoyed that whole piece. I remember being like, wow, so Jay does have a redeeming quality. I think they've got to go into Cupa Toxic, but I think I'm going to put them at the top of it. I got to spend more time with them as a couple. And again, I stop at season seven. So whatever happens after that, I don't know about it. Not really. But like, if they had kept dating, I think I could have come around to liking Jay. Spinner and Jane. I liked them together. I thought that they were, I thought that they worked really well together. She came into his life at probably the most inconvenient of times. Like Spinner literally had just been diagnosed with cancer. I feel like she's got abandonment issues going on and he's got issues going on with his health. So I feel like they're kind of bonded over like just circumstances. And so I don't think that's a, that makes for a long lasting relationship, but I feel like she was so beneficial to him during that time. So I'm throwing them into classic high school love story because I enjoyed them together for the time that they were together. Okay, so this is my last favorite couple. I love JT and Liberty. So Liberty has a crush on JT from the jump. So that's like one of the first big things is like Liberty pines after JT for years. I never thought that she was actually gonna get with JT. I just thought that she had this major crush for a long time. Maybe at some point they would like make out at a party or something, but I never, ever, ever thought that they would actually end up in a relationship. And honestly, they have one of the best love stories on the entire show, if you ask me. Really enjoy the two of them together. It sucks because like, you know, right before he, he JT passes away, like he's supposed to go and tell Liberty how he feels and they're supposed to get back together and everything's supposed to be perfect. She's his oatmeal and it's really sad how it ends. It's really sad that it ends the way it does, but it's kind of beautiful because at least like, I have a feeling that Liberty knew that like, JT super loved her and they were definitely soulmates, at least for the time that they were together. So they're going in end game. I really enjoyed their relationship, even though at times it was highly, highly dysfunctional. And like, if I'm looking at it from a real point of view, like should they have been together? Maybe not. Uh, Liberty's a little bit too anal retentive and JT's a little bit too much of a free spirit. But I also think that they balanced each other out so much that I'm, yeah, I'm okay with my decision. Now we're down to our final couple. And if you've spent any time listening to me talk about Degrassi, then you already know right where this is going into dumpster fire top. No, it's going second tier. It's going right underneath Rick and Terry. I said I was only gonna do couples from seasons one through seven, and this is not a couple from seasons one through seven. But if I didn't include it and I didn't get to rant about it, I was gonna be very upset. That at the time of filming in real life, supposedly, according to information I can find on the internet and my comment section. Supposedly, Spinner and Emma were dating in real life at this time, and that's why they 
they had some kind of chemistry, I assume. So the writers basically wrote into the show that they marry each other, like into this Degrassi movie. You know what? It doesn't make any sense. Regardless of if they were dating in real life, their characters barely ever interact. And their characters most definitely have nothing in common besides trauma bonding from a shared experience and And that's it. I think it would be great if they made another movie and they explain how they did this on impulse and then like the marriage dissolved a month later. That would be, that would make more sense. Like it was some kind of fever dream and wasn't an actual real experience. But I really just never understood why you would put these two characters together and regardless of what they were doing off camera, it didn't make sense on camera. Oh guys, it took two days and two hours That was a little Josie and the Pussycats, just for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Here it is in all of its glory. This was really fun. I don't know if tier lists do well on my channel. I don't know if you guys like them or not, but I'm, I really enjoy doing this. It takes a very long time to film because I have to talk about everything I'm doing before I do it. And so it eats away a lot of time, but I'm having a lot of fun doing these rankings. So if you would like me to rank anything else, let me know down in the comment section below. What do you think of my rankings? What would you move around? I will put a link in the description for this exact tier list that I made and feel free to do it yourself, do it with your friends for fun. And if you feel so inclined, leave me a link so I can see what your tier list looks like. As always, if you enjoyed this video, if you like watching me talk about all things pop culture, music, movies, TV shows, what have you, drop a like on this video, then run over to that subscribe button, hit the bell next to it so you can be notified every time I upload. That's all I have to say about Degrassi. I'm definitely gonna do more Degrassi videos, much like Boy Meets World. I feel like this is gonna be a staple of my channel. So if you have any suggestions for different videos you would like me to do on Degrassi, let me know in the comments. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.